Hey art nerds, remember when we went to Five Below and got a bunch of alcohol markers? It's okay if you don't remember because it actually happened over three trips. But Five Below has alcohol markers and I've talked about them in a couple of different Shop With Me videos. I'll link those in the cards below if you're interested in seeing what kind of art supply goodness Five Below has. So it is finally time for us to do the Five Below feel test and Spoiler, we're going to use those five below markers to create this piece here. This was rendered slash colored in a Strathmore mixed media sketchbook, so the same sketchbook I used for all of my alcohol marker tests, I'm being pretty fair. And I tried to use as many of these markers as I could in this one illustration. So we've got five different sets of markers, each one was about five dollars each got two of the Foma color, the fake Prismacolor sets that were $5 each and have 12 markers in them. We have the INC dual ended alcohol markers that originally said they were water based, but surprise, they're alcohol and they want to slip everywhere. And we have two packs of the alcohol brush tip markers, the skin tones and the grayscale. So not only am I going to review these markers as alcohol markers, part of my much larger alcohol marker review series that you can check out here on the channel, but I'm also going to give you some tips for how to use cheap, cheap, cheap alcohol markers to make fairly decent art. So if you are on the market for good cheap alcohol markers, spoiler, most of these are not going to be the markers for you. But stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to have some great recommendations for cheap alcohol markers that will give you what you're looking for. So here's a closer look at that finished field test. It was complete, completed almost entirely with markers from Five Below, but I did ink it with the Tombow Furenosuke or Furenosuke brush pins, and I used white gouache for highlights. I also started with a red lead sketch. This is just red Pentel lead and like a 0.5 pencil. You can find that almost anywhere. You can definitely find it at Walmart. So it is a pretty cheap art supply, and I used it for the underdrawing, which is gonna allow me to do kind of a lineless art style with this. I'm working in a Strathmore mixed media sketchbook. This is a heavier paper. I personally like heavier papers. I'm not a big marker paper kind of person, so I like Bristol and mixed up media paper for my alcohol markers. And I'm using several different sets purchased from Five Below at different times. And I talk about all of these sets in various Five Below videos with the exception of the newest set, which is a set of Foma color markers that you see at the top. I also have all of my swatches handy. I tried a few different things off camera before we started because I originally thought I was gonna be really reliant on the grayscales for adding some color and some contrast. Now, in the beginning, I do use a Copic colorless blender just to help blend things out a little bit. It's because none of these sets came with a colorless blender and I didn't see any colorless blenders for sale at Five Below. And I am using markers from all of the sets interchangeably. I'm not trying to use one set first or anything like that. So I'm basically just going by the colors I need. So you're going to see me switching between markers and blending out between markers pretty frequently. One of the things I want to point out is that all of these markers are super bleedy. They are bleedier, I think, than any of the any other markers I've reviewed here on the channel, and that includes like the Milo Art and the Ohuhu markers, which makes them difficult to control. I would not recommend these for coloring books, especially coloring books with smaller areas to color. So the Foma colors are super weird. The chisel tip wiggles a whole lot in the marker itself, and then later I was able to just pull it out as a single piece. The chisel tip itself doesn't seem like it's cheaply made, but it's not attached to anything in the marker and I don't even know if there's anything in the marker for it to attach to. So the fact that the tip is so wiggly and it just kind of freely wiggles in the marker body makes it very hard to control how I'm using the marker and it makes it difficult to color. So even though I would have liked to have used this marker more for blending and to cover more area, it got to the point where that was just not possible. 
So I switched over to the brush tip skin tone markers, even though I had a set of grays and skin tones in the FOMA colors. After swatching all the colors, these seem like the next closest thing. And as you guys can see, it's actually pretty dark. Now I would have liked to have blended it back out with the FOMA colors a bit more. You can see me trying to do it here, but again, it's super bleedy, so it leaches outside the lines that'll leach into other objects, like other things you're coloring. And it also creates this weird speckling. So you wanna be pretty careful with how much blending you do. These things are very juicy, like all of them are pretty juicy. And um, the only thing stopping you from really saturating the paper are the tips on the things. Like the brush markers will do a good job saturating the paper. The bullet and the chisel tips are not so great. So for this field test, I'm using five different sets of alcohol markers from Five Below. They seem to be introducing new sets as time progresses. The multi, the assorted color set that I am using that I hadn't like introduced in a prior video was new when I went to Five Below earlier in the day. So it seems like their alcohol markers are selling okay and people are interested in them. I'd be kind of curious to hear from you guys. Are any of you guys using them? Do you like them? Are these like your primary alcohol markers? But um, I'm using five different sets for this piece and I feel like I feel like I could have gotten away with not having the FOMA color skin tones and grays because I feel like the two packs of brush markers, the skin tone set and the gray set kind of cover what I need for that. With the exception of like my base skin tone color came from the FOMA color. Set. And I'm just calling that, them that because they look like Prisma colors, but they're not Prisma colors. And none of these, I mean, some of these do have names like the INC markers. Those are the ones that look like her color markers. Those have a name, but some of these are just like generic alcohol markers from Five Below. And I'm trying to help differentiate between them. But other than that, there's not necessarily a lot of color overlap between the sets. There are some similar colors, like the assorted colors from Foma Color and the INC set. There are some similar colors in the blues and in the magentas, but I found myself drawing from all of the sets in order to get the colors that I needed and utilizing the grays to some extent to get the colors that I needed. Now, originally I thought I was going to have to use an old, 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 old trick where I would apply a base color and then do gray on top of that for the shading or the reverse, do a grise with gray first where you, you color in all the shadows and then apply my color on top of that, which explains some of the swatches I showed you guys at the beginning. But I actually had a wide enough color gamut for this piece that I didn't really need to do that. Now, I do use the gray a lot on the leather motorcycle jacket but that was by choice that really wasn't by force I went into it figuring I was going to use the grays a lot there and be able to really test out the brush markers so of the markers that I got from five below the brush markers which are technically the most expensive because they're five dollars for six rather than like five dollars for twelve or five dollars for ten those are the best markers and they are pretty much the only markers I can recommend from Five Below. The INC ones are not so bad. They're, I'm just kind of biased against bullet tip markers, but they're pretty standard for bullet tip markers. They've got good ink flow. They come in basic assorted colors. They could be good for someone who's interested in trying out alcohol markers, maybe for coloring, and they're not sure that they want to use them like they don't know if they would like brush markers. Maybe brush markers are too difficult for them to control or they work much smaller than that. Or they, they like doing really, really fine details and they don't trust their hands for the fine motor control. Me personally though, I am a big brush tip fan. Usually I prefer like the foam rubber tips that you find in like Copic markers or the Blick Studio markers or Prismacolor brush markers. Uh, these are fiber tips, so they're not as nice. They're more prone to getting mushy and to getting frayed and to wearing out. But considering how cheap they were, they're not bad at all. Um, so normally I don't use inexpensiveness to excuse poor quality. 
Uh, and you guys will notice that in some of my Dollar Tree videos because honestly, I see art supplies in as, as an investment. I don't think you have to spend a boatload of money to get good art supplies, but I also don't think using something you hate just because it was cheap is the way to go either. It's a really good way to create an aversion to art and to give yourself a lot of repetitive strain injuries. So um, when I say I like these brush markers the best of the five below alcohol markers, I mean that genuinely. Like I'm not making excuses for them and they're pretty comparable to other fiber tip alcohol markers. In fact, I like them better than the Tombow ABTs. They don't have the ink flow issues the Tombow ABT markers had. Um, I would say they're about on par with the Ohuhu brush markers for me. And I really like the Ohuhu brush markers. So take that as kind of a, a big old thumbs up. But the fake Prisma colors, the Foma colors, oh man, I really wanted to like that chisel tip because I like the tri chisel tip in real Prisma color markers. But the fact that it wiggles around and it gets loose and it's just difficult to control more so than a chisel tip would be difficult to control. Mm, I would say pass on those. But I think it's really cool that Five Below has such a large art supply section. They have a fair amount of diversity in the art supplies they offer. They not only offer art supplies, but they also have like sketchbooks and they have art organizational things like portfolios and color pencil holders. And I really appreciate seeing a mass market store that appeals to people on a budget as well as to younger people trying to have a good selection of art supplies. So usually stores will do that with like makeup and they'll do that with like snacks. It's nice to see art supplies as one of those like impulse buy items in a good way. I don't mean that to sound pejorative, but like in a in an accessibility sort of way. I have reviewed a lot of cheap art supplies here on the channel. I make it a point even though they are not always my favorite art supplies or what I would really recommend. I make it a point to continue to review cheap art supplies because I believe art should be accessible to anyone who wants to learn how to do it. And while I love that smartphones and inexpensive smartphones have made digital art more accessible to people and free programs like Ibis and Medibang make it more accessible to people, I want the same for traditional art because they're just very different. And I mean, traditional art and digital art are very different. And I think they're both worth knowing. And I think they're both worth appreciating. And I think affordable art supplies allows people to try new things with traditional art that they might not be able to afford to try or they might not justify trying. And I also like that inexpensive art supplies in many ways lowers that barrier. So it quits being this precious object that you hoard, but it becomes an object that you actually use. So in this video, I have several blending techniques that I wasn't really able to explain too well in depth here. I have some other videos where I talk about using cheap markers and how to get the most out of your cheap markers, including permanent markers from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna link those in the description below. I'm also gonna link some of my favorite alcohol marker tutorials for you guys, because I think you guys will enjoy them. So I have finished with the marker portion of this tutorial. Ah, they were not the worst. None of these, except for that one Foma color that was really, really wiggly and bad. None of these were the worst alcohol markers I reviewed. I reviewed some real stankers from AliExpress over the years. That's why I don't really review alcohol markers from AliExpress at all anymore, is I've gotten too many duds. It's just not worth the gamble. All of these were fairly decent. I'm mostly just really excited that Five Below has some really affordable alcohol markers and that these things are not gonna punish you for using them the way I feel some markers do. So I know some new artists, some younger artists are gonna get these for Christmas. They're gonna get them in their stocking and I feel like they can actually use them to make art that they're gonna enjoy and not just punishment art if you guys know what I mean. It did take a little bit of marker know-how to make this piece, but again, YouTube is full of free alcohol marker demonstrations and tutorials. So the education, the information is out there for you to learn utilizing those tutorials. And my channel has a lot of videos that'll help you guys out too. So the art supplies are affordable, they are accessible, and the information is out there. So for the inking on this piece, because this piece definitely needs some inking, I am using Tombow Furenosuke colored brush pens. Now you don't have to use those. 
I think Five Below actually has colored technical pins and I didn't purchase them because frankly, technical pins tend to be the same. They're either waterproof or they're not. They're either alcohol marker proof or they're not. They come in various sizes. I feel like there's not a lot I can add to like a technical pin conversation, especially technical pins from Five Below. But if you've used the technical pins from Five Below, that's like the little fixed with felt tip pins. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy them, if you like them, if you feel like they do the job. Um, now I have talked about technical pins that you can find at Walmart and that you can find at Michaels. And I've also talked about brush pins that you can find at Walmart and you can find at Michaels. And if I saw colored brush pins that were not like the watercolor brush pins, but like were more like these sort of inking pins, the, the food and us, Fudonosuke pins, I would probably pick those up and review them from Five Below because I'd be curious to see if they're as good as these. I feel like I have more to talk about with that. And considering how wide their art supply selection seems to be and considering that they are adding new art supplies, there's a good chance that they'll get them. Now, what I kind of think is going on is I think Five Below is probably buying a lot of from China art supplies because I'm seeing a lot of art supplies at Five Below that I recognize from like Amazon and I recognize from like AliExpress and they've just been rebranded, which is not a bad thing. Again, these are making art supplies more accessible. You're putting them in a box store. Some people can't order off art supplies off the internet or they're not willing to order art supplies off the internet or they need them right away. People have different reasons for why they buy things the way they buy things. So seeing them in stores, especially like Five Below, where the there isn't like a lot of markup on them, I feel like I'm good with that. I'm at peace with that. Like I'm not gonna complain about it. Am I gonna review like every single thing they carry there? Absolutely not. But you know, when I do see, see when I do see something that looks interesting and looks fun and looks like it might actually be half decent, I don't mind picking it up and telling talking to you guys about it. I'm kind of over the days of like getting art supplies I know I'll probably hate just so that I can rage about why I hate them on the internet. And I'm really more about using my experience and my expertise reviewing art supplies and working as a comic artist to try and find art supplies I think you guys will like and dedicating that time to them instead. And these are not that bad. They're not that great, but they're not that bad. So let's talk about the pros and cons of alcohol markers from Five Below. First off is the price. Even the most expensive ones, the six dollars, or I'm sorry, the six markers for five dollars are very, very cheap for alcohol markers, especially alcohol markers you can buy in a store. Those are also my favorites. I like the brushes on them decently well and the ink flow is pretty good. Those would be my recommended pick and I hope that Five Below offers more of those in more colors and in more flavors, I guess. The INC alcohol markers, now those said they were water-based markers on the packaging, so gotta look out for that, but they're actually alcohol markers. Those are pretty standard bullet tip markers. You get 10 of those for $5, so they're 50 cents each. The Foma colors, the fake Prisma colors, so far are available in two sets, skin tones and grays and assorted colors, and you get 12 of those for five dollars that's less than 50 cents a marker it's still a pretty good price but the build quality on those is not as good as on the INC's and on the brush tip alcohol markers so the price for these is really pretty good I didn't have any ink flow issues I did have some build quality issues and even though I had to buy five packs, I ended up getting like 46 colors. So that was $25 for 46 colors, which is really pretty cheap. Now on the flip side, Ohuhu markers, I think you can get 88 of the brush tips for around $33. The price does vacillate. So the five below markers are not the cheapest alcohol markers on the market, but they are fairly cheap and they're fairly accessible. So the cons. The build quality on many of these markers are terrible. It makes coloring not fun at all when you have the tip just wiggling all over the place. They're also super prone to bleeding. They're difficult to control. So I would not recommend them for coloring in coloring books or on thinner papers or for coloring smaller spaces. Even as large as this is, and this is on a five by eight sheet of mixed media paper, 
I still had difficulty controlling some of the colors and I had a lot of color bleeding into her eyes that I covered up with the white gouache. And these are not gonna last very long. So these are fine as like a whoops, I forgot my alcohol markers and I'm going to grandma's house or I'm going to a convention or what have you. These are not gonna last you very long. So think of these as an investment in seeing if you even like alcohol markers and then maybe consider buying alcohol markers that you like just a little bit better. So I promise you guys some great alternatives to five below alcohol markers. First though, I do want to say that the brush tip markers from five below, the dual tip alcohol markers are the best of the five below markers I've played around with. With the INC color points being an all right second. The FOMA colors, you guys saw that the tips, especially for that like beigey color that I started with, the tips will literally just come out and then they'll start wiggling around randomly, which makes coloring extremely difficult with these. So although you get a lot more colors with these, if you can afford better, if you have access to better, I would skip these. These are not gonna make you happy. So these, pretty good. These, passably good. But what is even better, in my opinion, and doesn't cost a whole lot more, would be the Okuhu brush tip markers. They're still fiber tip markers, which is not my favorite of the alcohol markers out there. I like fiber tip brushes better than I like bullet tips, but I vastly prefer foam rubber tips. But for the price, these things are really, really good. I have a full unboxing swatch and field test that I'm gonna link here in the cards as well as down in the description. But I was really happy with the Ohuhu markers. Now, the downside to the Ohuhu markers, you gotta buy these off of either the Ohuhu site or off of Amazon. You're not gonna be able to find or you're probably not going to find them in box stores. And I know for a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people, buying something in person is often the only way you're gonna be able to buy it. Your parents give you 10 bucks and tell you to go wild in a five below or in a Dollar Tree. These are not necessarily on the market, but if you have the ability, I would vastly recommend the Ohuhu markers over any of the five below markers we talked about today. I don't have any affiliation with Ohuhu. We do not have a partnership. I don't think they even know my name, um, but I do like them better than the five below markers, and I think they're gonna make you a lot happier. And this is just talking about cheap markers. We're not even getting into more expensive alcohol markers. I have plenty of videos about those here on the channel, so if you're actually looking to invest a fair amount of money, you're ready to really dive into alcohol markers, I have a lot of reviews and field tests that demonstrate how I use these markers here on the channel to help you guys out. So this is the Ohuhu field test. You have a much wider range of colors with the Ohuhu, and if you get the Ohuhu bullet tips, you get even more colors than that. And I think they also have some standalone skin tone sets. With the five below markers, I cobbled this together using markers from several different brands. I picked up several different sets. So let's see, if each of these sets is $5 and I have five sets, I spent $25 on really cheap markers from uh, from five below. And let's see, we've got 12 right here. We've got 24 plus 12 is 36 plus, I think this is 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So 46 total markers for $25. Not bad, that's almost 50 cents a marker each. But again, some of these markers have some serious build quality issues. Whereas with the Ohuhu markers, I, and don't quote me on this, you can check the description below for an accurate price. I think it was like $33 for the 88 piece brush tip set. So the Ohuhu markers are even cheaper than the five below markers. But if you have to buy things in person, if you don't have access to ordering things off the internet for whatever reason, the brush tip five below markers are the ones that I would recommend you picking up, even though they are basically twice as expensive as uh, the INC markers and the fake Prisma colors, they perform a lot better and I think you'll be happier with them overall. 
So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this field test video. I hope it was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down in the description below what other sort of cheap art supplies you'd like to see me review. I've done a lot of that here on the channel, so check out my Crayola playlist if you're interested. And um, I generally do not do like color pencil stuff too much, and I don't really do acrylic stuff too much. So if there's like cheap watercolor stuff you want to see me talk about, or if you'd like to see me talk about how to handle some of the Crayola stuff, let me know down in the comments below. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye guys!